Okay, today we're going to do some line plastering and we're going to restore this old brickwork back to a line plastered state. So we've got to do it in a completely breathable material using old methods. First thing we're going to do is give it a good brush down, get rid of all the excess dust and then we're going to give it a good spray. Give it a good key ready for when we start applying the render. So we need to get the dust off the brick because lime needs a good key to stick to. It needs a good bond. And then we're going to spray it down which will give it a bit more life. So that means it's not going to suck all the life out of the render in one hit. So the water is also going to give it help provide a key so it can stick to the brick. So this is a product we're using. This is probably the best company we're using for lime plaster. It's all bagged up, it's pre-mixed, pre-made, and it's added with synthetic fiber, which we're going to talk about now. So this is the lime plaster we're using. It's pre-mixed, it's already mixed in a bag. All we've got to do is pour it in and add a bit of water. A lot of the work is done for you. Um, the only thing I would say is just add the water slowly. You don't want this base coat to be runny. We need it to be quite thick, we need it to have a lot of substance, so it's cold at its own weight. Because the thing is with lime plaster, it's a lot heavier than gypsum, which means we've got to put it on in thinner layers over time, which is what we're going to talk about in the process. We're going to go through everything with that with you, but first of all, I want you to realise it's quite thick when you're mixing it. So, I'm going to cut the bag, and we literally just take it over to your bucket, and it just plops in. It's like a big ball of plaster. There it is. It's the big lump of plaster. We're just going to slowly add water and mix it together. And that is what we're going to use for the base coat. Now we want the mix to be quite thick. So as you can see when you load it up, Thick consistency. And what you'll also notice is when you get a close up, you'll see all the fibres in there. Now, it's not like they use horsehair like they used to do back in the day. It's all synthetic, it's in the mix, so all that is included. So you don't have to add anything, we're just literally adding water to this, and that is ready to go, which is good for us. Right, so we started on the top working down. Now, the first thing I like to do is put an initial base coat on. Now, what we're going to do right to left because we're rendering really squash it into that brickwork we're pushing it straight into there but we're doing a tight coat really pushing it into that brickwork nice and firm and what we're doing was getting an initial coat now this isn't gypsum it's a lot heavier like we were saying before so we, and it needs a bigger key so what we need to do is push it into the bricks really get it into the grit and that way it's going to have a true hold and it's going to last so that's the first thing we're doing and again, with the product not being too, too runny, we can really work it into the brickwork without worrying about it sagging. It can actually hold its weight quite well. And in this particular mitt, you can feel there's a lot of aggregate in there, which is binding the chemicals and the lime together, giving it a strong hold. So we're going to give it that first initial coat all the way. pushing it hard into the brickwork, so putting a lot of pressure behind your trowel. And that way you can kind of get a level footing for when you start ruling off. So because of bricks, I'll be honest, they're all over the place. <laughs> At least with this initial coat, we can start to flatten and get a, a nice guide to work off. So what I'm doing is giving it a nice initial bond whilst leveling out any low spots in the brickwork. So that's the first bit. Now what we're going to do once you've got initial base, going to add another layer. Now this is important because we want to build out the thickness. So we're looking at an overall thickness around 9mm. Talk about that in more detail in a minute. But what you don't want to do when you're applying the render, you don't want to be playing with it with your trowel. What it's going to do is weaken the product essentially. So once you've got the product on, don't keep troweling it off. Just put a layer on and then leave it. Because you don't want to be playing with it, you're going to make the product weaker because you're going to pull the moisture right to the front. So once you've applied it, get an even product, even amount, as much as you can. And then from that point, we're then going to rule it. Now we're going to go into this in detail, but with the base coat, there's two base coats actually, there's one, and then there's one afterwards. But what we do is give it a rule, and this makes sure that we're going to get a nice flat wall. Now with a base coat, it's not as essential, but we're going to talk about this in detail soon. And then, once it's dried, so you want to give it about an hour or so, and then we're going to scratch it. Now what we want to do is apply a diamond formation 
both ways 45 degrees now usually you just use a, a wavy scratch that's not enough with the line render it needs a bigger key and the cross hatch formation provided in here is going to give it a much more consistent key which is going to give it a bigger bond when it comes to the second base coat which we're going to apply in a minute now you do need to give time so i'm going to talk about drying times properly in a later video but this is what it's looking like it's nice and dry five days later and now we're going to apply the second base coat i've got a little sprayer here and what i want to do is really hydrate that render because it has dried up so i'm going to give it a generous spray of water all over the render and what this is going to allow us to do is give it a bit of moisture so we apply another layer of render it's not going to suck the life out of it so again we're spraying every layer we're working on we're always spraying the plaster beforehand and this is just going to give us a generous amount of water which means we can work onto it from the level onwards so a good rule of thumb when you are working with a lime render lime plaster any render actually you always want to hydrate the background you're working on and then we're going to work on to the next stage which is applying the next base coat of plaster which we're going to go into grave detail now so let's get into it see ya Now the second coat is very similar to the first. All we're doing is a lot of pressure behind the trowel, pushing the lime plaster into the backing coat that we made. So again, pressure is key here. We want to really push it into that key, push it into the scratch coat and make sure that it's really bedded into the grooves that we created. Now this is, again, it's not gypsum based, so we need to give it a bit more pressure than what it's used to. But with the key we created there, there's plenty of scope for it to dig its way into the base coat nicely so just really pushing in and you know everyone's quite scared i think of using lime plaster but the reality is it's not far off from anything you're used to using it's just a different product needs a bit more pressure and generally just needs a bit more time before coats between coats sorry that is a big problem and a big distinction between this and gypsum based but generally it's the same thing a lot of pressure, push it in. Oh, there's a bit of a clump of hair there, can you see? That's been a clump together there. <laughs> push it out. And then just really pushing in and then getting an even coverage up around it. So we're looking at two coats of around nine mil. That's what we're looking for when we're applying lime plaster. It's a nice amount, especially the traditional way. Um, and this is what this property had before. So I want to keep it as, as it was before and try and do it the exact same way. So we're just going to apply an even coverage around and I'll talk about the next bit. RBA 1.2 meters, put it straight to the wall. We're going to go vertically first. Now, again, this as a product rules really nicely. It doesn't pull itself off because it's got a nice grip towards a base coat. All we're doing is troweling and leveling off the top end of the product. So, we're not going to pull anything back to brick. And what you do is just nice, nicely level it off. Now, this is probably the hardest part to any plastering. It's the same with lime plastering. It's probably the hardest part you're gonna ever do. It's ruling off, it's a fine art, but actually with the lime plaster, because it's binding itself well to itself, it's not pulling, it's not dragging like sand cement can. It rules off, in my opinion, very nicely. So it shouldn't be as hard as you make out. Now I can't, don't know if you can see, we've got a few low areas. What we're gonna do, take the excess from the derby, we're gonna fill them in. What we're trying to do is get a nice, consistently flat area. Now it's important with this coat. The base coat, we had a bit more tolerance. This is the one that matters. This is the base that's gonna be, it's the final base coat, which means we're gonna be putting our finish to this. So we've got to make sure that we've flattened it off correctly. So fill in any low spots, go again. Now that's pretty good in my eyes. Go one more time there. Now what I'm going to do 
let's go horizontally. And this way we've got an accurate rule whether it's dead flat. It's no good going just one way because it's not enough. It'll lie to you. You need to go both ways to make sure you've got a truly flat wall. Now, I'm not plumbing it off. I'm using the parameters that I've got. I've got to work to existing at the top and I've got to work to the existing skirting boards at the bottom. So I'm not using the plumb. I'm just working to the areas I've got and I'm going to blend it nicely into them. That's the parameters I'm working with. Now what I'm going to do is get my long straight edge. I've got it flat. Now like that, it's looking good. Let you have a look. So that is what we're looking for. So we've applied the second coat. Now what we want to do is give it a bit of time. What we're going to do, we've got to let it cure up a little bit and then we're going to use the devil's flow. I'm going to explain all that in the next section. We're just going to get this wall flatter and flatter. So keep watching. Okay, this is the devil's flow. It's just a plastic flow. And what you've done is I've just put a few screws in at the top. Now, there's a reason for this. We're going to do two things when we do this. I've left it two hours. That's going to give enough time for the line render to take up a little bit. But what we're doing is putting the float flat to the render. And what we're going to do is, and I'm going to pull off any high specs, fill in any low spots, but it's also going to compress the render. It's going to make it stronger. And whilst we're doing that, it's also going to provide a key. All these lines, we're working in figure eight motions. This is just going to allow us to, when we do the top coat of plaster, it's got something to stick to. With lime plaster, because it is a heavier product, there always needs to be a key. That is fundamental. If there's no key, the product won't stick and everything else after will fail. So that is why it's so important. So I want to leave it at least 72 hours between coats. That's in bare minimum. They actually say it's one calendar day per millimeter spread. So for this base coat, it would have been 11 days, but the five days I've left between coats, it's a good rule of thumb. And we're going to get ready to apply the top coat, which I'll leave in the link below. So for the top coat, you want it to be a bit creamier. You don't want it to be as thick, so when you're mixing it, it's got a bit more smoothness to it. It's definitely a smoother product. It's used finer sand and there's no thick aggregate in there. But we don't want this coat to be too thick. So when you're mixing it, add a bit more water and you're looking to be a bit more of a creamier mix rather than thicker and consistent. So now we're applying the top coat. Now this is probably the easiest stage of your line plastering journey. All we're going to do is load up a small amount and just trowel in a thin layer across. Now we're looking for about two mil and what this is going to do is it's going to take any lumps out of plastic but it's all going to fill the key that we've created. Now this is going to sit nicely into the bond and that way when we're applying the plaster it's going to sit and it's not going to move around, so we're just applying an initial coat. Again, because it's quite a thin product, we've mixed it a bit creamier than before. It's nowhere near as thick, so we've added a bit more water. So we're literally just applying the plaster and trying to get it as smooth as possible. Now, the secret with this stuff, you don't want to be playing it. Once you've trialled it on, leave it. You want to trial it as flat as possible, but basically we're going to add two layers to this. So. The main trick here is just not be playing with the plaster, don't keep roughing it up because you're going to pull the moisture from the back and it could potentially weaken the product. So get it on as flat as you can. And then when we are plastering, work left to right so it's opposite than as if we were rendering. So we're going to cover this area here. Now I need to leave the wall for a little bit. You want to get back on it when it's quite tough. So the first coat would need to sit nicely into the scratch. If you jump on it too soon, if you start applying your second coat, you're going to disturb the first coat and essentially pull it from the back in. So you can just put your finger in and if it's holding its weight, if your finger's not going into the lime plaster, then that's a good gauge on when you want to start your second coat. So for me, this has been roughly 20 minutes. So the base coat is going to pull the moisture from the, uh, the first layer of your finish and it's going to give it a stable background to work on. Now the second coat is your finishing coat almost. That's how I see it. Two layers of plaster, finished plaster. The first layer takes the battering from the base coat. The top layer is your nice aesthetic look. So now we're just going to apply the second coat the same as what we just did then. Again, working left to right, take a small amount. And if you've done any plastering before with multi-finish, any gypsum based products, this is lovely to apply. It's quite smooth. It doesn't really fight you, it's nice to apply and you can get it quite flat. 
with just your trowel. So again, we're looking at about two millimeters thickness with this coat again. We're just trying to give it a nice overall, an overall finish of about four mil. Again, I've been working to the parameters at the top and the bottom. So I've married, married it into there, finished it. It's actually gone quite well in terms of thickness there. So that's good. But again, just however you decide. If you're not quite four mil, if you're a bit more, if you're a bit less, it doesn't matter. As long as you're getting it on in a fairly flat way, then that's cool. And also, like I said, I've got to emphasize this. Don't play with it. Once you've applied it, take a few ripples out, but the next section we're gonna go in now to really start getting the line plaster flat. So I'm gonna go into that in a minute. So we're gonna finish applying this coat here. And again, one last thing. I said this before in a video, a lot of people are scared of using lime plaster. It's really not that bad. If you follow the process outlined in this, you can do it. It's just about timings. So we're gonna apply this coat and then we're gonna leave it for another 20 minutes, say. We want this to take up again. Before we do anything else, we need this coat to settle and almost harden up a little bit. If you play with it too soon, especially when you travel, you'll just start tearing it. That's not what we want. You've got to follow a specific rule and that's what we're going to do next. So wait for about 20 minutes and then we'll see where we're up to. Now this is a great test to see if it's too soon. If you can literally put your fingers into the wall and leave indentation, then you've got to leave it a bit longer. So the next stage involves something different. This is a sponge float. Now this is what we're going to use to give the plaster a bit of a key. Now basically what we need to do is get rid of the bumps, get rid of the lines, get rid of the grooves. We're going to use this. So what you're going to do is soak it in water first. Nice generous bit of water, we're going to give it figure of eight motions. Now you don't want to be doing this when it's too soft, as I've shown in the last kit, clip. If you can put your fingers into the plaster and it leaves an indentation, then that's way too early. You don't want to be doing this when it's early because it'll just disturb the plaster and it'll essentially make it lumpy. You'll move it and it won't have a flat base as what you had if you left it. So we're just giving it a nice figure of eight motions taking any lines, any ridges out, a section at a time. And now at the edges as well, internals, keep them nice and do it everywhere, all over the wall. And if it leaves, starts leaving coarse lines, you know it's too dry, get it back in the water. Just give it a good, good little soak, scrape any excess off at the sides and then finish. And then what you'll see is you've got that smooth, consistency. So instead of it pulling, all we want to be doing is bringing the fat to the surface. It's almost like a fine slurry of um, lime plaster and it kind of brings itself to the top. That's what we're looking for. If it starts dragging, it's too dry and it starts pulling, you've done it too soon. So we just want this nice little slurry and what we call it, we call it fat. And it looks something like this. You can see it's left a texture, but it's not too bad. Now once we've got that, Clean trowel, make sure it's cleaned. Clean any excess plaster off. You want a clean blade coming in. Just gonna trowel them lines out. Now, this is very easy. It actually takes all the work out of the job. And instead of it pulling, if you catch this at the right time, you're just gonna be left with a nice smooth layer of plaster. And this is true, it's just unfortunately about timing. So you will get used to it, it does get easier, but once you hit it at the right time, you will just get a lovely finish. You'll be left with a smooth wall. Now we've got some more troweling to do after this, but to be honest, if you make it to this point, this is probably, you've broke the back of the job. Once it's sponged, once you start to flatten it, you really start to get that smooth finish. So fill in your edges. We've got a wet angle to deal with there, but that's okay. Take all the lines out. As you can see, we're left with a smooth-ish wall. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. And again, the process from now on is very simple. I'm just gonna wet the edges. Give a bit of water to the edges there with my brush coming in. And then we're just troweling out. Now, lime plaster is actually very forgiving. When you wet it up, it can come back. It doesn't stay as stiff as say gypsum plaster, which will set when it sets. The lime plaster is actually quite nice to work with in the fact 
you can just bring it back. You don't have to worry about it just flash drying all of a sudden. It's actually a very nice product to use. You know, it's, it's not as scary, like I said, as people make out. And once you've done the sponging, it doesn't take a lot of trowels to get nice. So the trick here is to actually just let it dry. Just don't refrain from just constantly troweling up and playing with it. You've got to let it dry once it's sponged and um, you'll start to feel it, but as it starts to stiffen up, that's when you trowel it. So you've just got to let it do its thing, let time come in, but then over the nut, you just keep troweling, so you've got a nice flat finish. So I'd leave it another 20 minutes. What I'm gonna do is a dry trowel, where I just use a trowel, no water, and then that is it, the process done. That is how you completely line plaster a wall. It's not rocket science, and if you follow the steps in this video, you will figure it out. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.